Hello and welcome to the Imaginal Podcast. This is a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before it transforms, we too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. Hello, it's Sauce. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you? I know I ask that every week and I just long to hear your answers. I wish that I could hear how you are in this very minute. Just know that I am sending my best wishes. A truly, truly I am and hope that today brings you just what you hope for and just what you need. I wanted to tell you that I've been in talks with many people who are in the queue to be guests and co-hosts for the podcast. Some people that you haven't met yet and definitely some people you have met before. So I'm really excited. Right now we're doing a little solo series, which is revolving around the idea, I have solid self-esteem, so why dot, dot, dot. And this has just been on my heart so deeply. Because I believe that those of you who have done so much work in self-development and also who are leaders and teachers and therapists and parents, all of you who are so confident and accomplished and you have so much to share with the world, I think that sometimes there are deeper nuanced places that if those places could be sorted out, then an even more expressed version of you could be offered. And I guess what's at the root of that for me is for all of us to experience our lives in a way that is more free and more authentic, and likewise so that we can contribute to the world and to our relationships and to others in ways that are very unique to ourselves. And so I believe that the freeing up of those complex holdings can benefit the ways that someone experiences life, but also in the ways that they can bring their own uniqueness to the world. And I just find that to be so brilliantly beautiful, not to be cheesy, but seriously to release all that is within you and to not be held back by something unnecessarily. That is so deeply on my heart. This particular series of the I have self-esteem, so why, dot, 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 is like we've been talking about, I have solid self-esteem, so why is it that I still have self-doubt sometimes? And we've spent the last three episodes really looking at the arc of your self-esteem, comparing that to when self-doubt arises, and giving it a framework so that it makes sense, so that we can see like what it is that might be under the surface and keeping someone who is so accomplished from doing the things sometimes that they love most, and sometimes when there's just a very distant hope of doing something, but we disallowed ourselves a long time ago. Even though we have self-esteem, we, for some reason, get stuck or we're tired, or we put something in the someday category, or whatever it is that we each experience. So what I asked you to do last week was to identify what you believed as a young child or as a teen. Like, what were the things as a result of your moving through the world that you believed about yourself that held you back, or kept you a little bit quieter, or doubting? And then I asked you if you could root that belief down to something even more existential. So for me, I gave some personal examples. One was that because of my Asianness, when I was younger, I believed that I was a second class citizen. And when I rooted it down, it became that I'm really not acceptable or as lovable as other people. And I know, gosh, that sounds so untrue. And that sounds almost silly that I would live according to that idea still. However, these types of beliefs are so deep that we don't even know sometimes that we're subconsciously still adhering to them. 
And so it does take some mindfulness to sort those things out. But once we do, it, it makes so much sense. It's like, oh, no wonder I'm not doing that thing. Or no wonder I'm trying to be so perfectionistic. It's because we've put our whole ability to be loved or accepted onto that one thing. And I really think that that can be the source of either an action or an inaction. And oftentimes, just it rides along subconsciously our whole life. So what we're trying to do is interrupt those patterns, try to take it apart, try to see the layers within it. And that way, those things sort of lose their power. So that's what we did in the last three episodes. And in the future, I'm going to talk into that space of zooming into those moments and sorting out some strategies as to how to not get stuck in that place. But to end this part of the series, this part about why do I still have self-doubt sometimes, what I think might be beneficial right now is to actually come at it from a different place, from a more immense holding. So we were really zooming in. And today I thought if we could zoom out and bring in your own knowing of yourself, and bring in the grounded part of you that knows that those things are no longer meant to keep you small or keep you unexpressed, then that will actually offer a counter perspective into these places. And to tap into your inner knowing, I thought I would do this slightly different today. I've never done this before. But A while back, I wrote a guide on reclamation, and I think that the first two chapters could really get at these ideas that I'm hoping to posit for you. And so what I thought I'd do is just read them. They're actually really short, and within them, there are some questions. I I know I said that in the series, I'm going to be asking you questions, and in the last three episodes, I gave you two questions every time. But these two sections have questions built into them, and I will repeat them after, or else I'll link to the reclamation guide if you're interested. It's free. I wrote it a long time ago. It's a PDF document. It's super easy to read. I have to say, though, it might look a little outdated, but I will say that what's in it is up to date with my heart and how deeply I feel these things. So... Either you can write the questions down from the episode or I'll link the reclamation guide. It's super easy to download and it has other chapters as well. Okay, so here are the first two chapters. The first chapter is called, Who Are You? Who are you? It's such an important question, especially because other people are going to tell you who they think you are. This commentary can range from well-intended comments to unfair projections. But the truth is, only you know who you are. And if you're not careful, you can float right into the channels of who other people think you are and live your whole life there. But how tragic would that be? And the thing is, it happens so much more than you think. People very easily live entire lifetimes with unrequited Whited relationships with their own passions and components of their identity. And we may think we know who we are because we've steadied ourselves with self esteem and we have found success in our lives. But how often have you stopped to evaluate if you really are being and doing the things that are most authentically you? And do you even know what that is anymore? Success was oftentimes defined for us. So many of us started striving and trying to please others at a very young age. And we can very easily and mistakenly measure ourselves by someone else's standards in the hopes of finding the assurance that we are valuable. And you may not even notice when you've actually put aside your dreams or you quieted your passions and You may even have convinced yourself that you haven't. What are the things that you have disallowed yourself to do or be? Too often in life, we arrive at firm beliefs 
that persist even when they no longer make sense. These ingrained thoughts become such a part of us that we never question them. And I'm here to help you question that. What are the things that you have somehow determined as off limits for yourself? Only you will know what that is. But you also have to dare to query your truest self. Trust yourself to know yourself and dare to move into your own authenticity. You have one beautiful, sacred life. How were you meant to live it? Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited. (laughs) The second chapter is called You Have Agency. Understand that you are a legitimate citizen of this world just like anybody else. And you have the right to do, be, try, and pursue absolutely anything. You have full agency over your life. This is a giant, colorful, beautiful world, and not one part of your passion or personhood is off limits to you. Of course, the things that will come easiest are those that are authentic to who you are. But realize that authenticity doesn't have to mean familiarity. Just because you've not tried something yet doesn't mean you weren't meant to. As one former therapist told me with regard to finding and reclaiming aspects of my truest self, there may be things that you denied so early in your life that you'll be surprised as to what you uncover. Be curious and open-hearted. Dare to reconsider the things that pique your interest. When were you told that you weren't good enough? Why do you believe that someone else can do such and such, but you're not allowed to? What part of your personhood or which personality trait did you force into quietness because someone else characterized you differently? Gosh, I'm going to interrupt my own self right here. Remember, (laughs) always ask these questions with kindness. And I know this is very much focused on ourselves right now. But freeing ourselves actually, I think, helps us to be more generous as people and take ownership for our faults because we're not keeping our worth based on anything perfectionistic. So yeah, okay, back to the book. If you have siblings, were you ever labeled as something that was limiting, i.e. the smart one, the serious one, the rebellious one, the clumsy one, the artistic one, the one who isn't book smart, the one who can't play sports, etc.? Sometimes it may have even been said with the intention of being complimentary, but did it confine you to a path that was too narrow? If you're like every other human I've met thus far, there are situations and interactions that have made you feel smaller that have boxed you in at times. The wounds that we carry from being teased, judged, marginalized, or criticized can cut so deeply that we accept and obey the imprisonment subconsciously. Understandably, children instinctively can accommodate or relinquish portions of themselves in order to avoid shame to please others, or to blend in, or to seek love and acceptance. But please realize that often these judgments are made at the expense of our identities when we were too young to realize what was happening. And as adults, we are apt to do the very same thing. We may even hide the rationalizations of such from our conscious selves. Here's the thing, though. Those confines were not meant for you. So try to identify and then question where painful experiences may have caused you to force vital parts of who you are into dormancy, all the while remembering that it's so normal to do that. Have so much compassion for yourself. Shame was not meant for the innocent. You are not bound by permanent prison sentences. This is your life and you have agency. And again, I wanted to read those two chapters because I think that if we can bring an immensity of truth, the truth of who you are, your most identifiable you, if we can bring that to the fore again, alongside the realization that there are times when we have tied something to a deep existential worth element, then what we can do is once we've pointed out the false narratives that we're subconsciously accidentally living by, or consciously even, and bring truth to it and bring possibility to it, 
then I think that's a great combination for freedom. And again, we'll return to this series, the I have self-esteem, so why dot, 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 in other ways. But for now, for this series about why do I still have self-doubt sometimes, I think that the combination of pointing out false narratives and bringing the truth of who you are and bringing in imagination and possibility to who you are can be catalysts to either what you're hoping to do in that moment or who you want to be and who you really are, actually. I know there were a lot of questions in those two chapters, so I'll highlight a couple of them now, but I'll also put the link to the reclamation guide, the PDF download in the show notes. It's actually on my website as the contact page. So if you want to go to my website, look at the contact page. It's at the very bottom. There's a little box that allows you to sign up for the reclamation guide. And again, it's totally free. I just wrote it because I really hope for people to live the full, beautiful lives that they were meant to live. It's short. It's an easy read, really small chapters, but it has so much of my heart in it. (laughs) So I'd love for you to download it if it calls to you. For now, here are some of the questions that were in the pages that I just read. Who are you? Really, who are you? What are the things that you have somehow determined as off limits for yourself? You have one beautiful sacred life and how are you meant to live it? When were you told that you weren't good enough? Why do you believe that someone else can do such and such, but you're not allowed to? What part of your personhood or which personality trait did you force into quietness because someone else characterized you differently? If you have siblings, were you ever labeled as something that was limiting? The smart one, the serious one, the rebellious one, the clumsy one, the artistic one, the one who isn't book smart, the one who can't play sports, etc.? Sometimes it may have even been said with the intention of being complimentary, but did it confine you to a path that was too narrow? Oh my goodness, I feel like there's so much more to say, but I think that also this is a good stopping point for now. What I'm hoping for you to see is your authenticity and what it is that keeps us from that, from embodying it, from living it, from expressing it, from being that and how to start to recognize and take apart the things that are confining and move into the immensity of the imagination and the freedom of who you really are. So I have solid self-esteem, so why do I have self-doubt sometimes? It is definitely a nuanced scenario, isn't it? Thank you for being on this journey with me and I really honor who you are and who you know yourself to be. And I just want to give you all my support as you give yourself permission to make choices that are in alignment with your life. And I'm smiling just thinking of the ways that will be beneficial to both you and to all those you know and to the world at large. I think the more that you can show up as your most expressed, self in all your brilliancy. And saying that, I don't want that to be pressureful, but rather to catalyze a life of freedom and authenticity that knows no bounds or confines from old narratives. All right, we are moving into the new segment, newish segment. We've been doing it for a few weeks now. Anecdotal lightness or things that are funny. I'm curious to know how many of you are still spending a good amount of time on Zoom. I do. Most days have a lot going on on Zoom, whether those are meetings, big meetings, or one-on-one clients. It can be so many different things. I find myself on Zoom, music lessons that I'm taking, (laughs) therapy. There's a lot of things on Zoom still for me. And one thing that I found funny lately is, okay, do you ever use gallery view? Like, I prefer to use speaker view if I am working with a person one-on-one because I really want to be able to just pretend we're not on Zoom so I can really see them. But I do need to use gallery view if I'm recording a music lesson because I need to be able to see both my teacher and me or if I'm 
in a big meeting where it's important to sort of keep a pulse of the whole room where seeing everybody at the same time is important. And in that case, you see yourself more than you would if you were just sitting one-on-one with someone. You're not really looking at yourself. But yeah, so on Zoom, obviously you can see yourself. And if you're in gallery view, then you're bigger. (laughs) And what I find funny is that sometimes I get a little confused because Zoom isn't a mirror image. And when I look at myself on a screen, to me, that usually is looking in a mirror. And like you probably, I've somehow adapted my brain into knowing that I'm looking in a mirror. So if I'm doing my makeup or I'm doing my hair, there's some sort of instinct to know where your eye is by looking at it in the mirror. But on Zoom... It's not a mirror image. (laughs) And once in a while, I will see that my hair is looking crazy and I will try to fix it. And I will think that I'm looking in a mirror. (laughs) So when I go to fix it, I am going to the wrong side of my hair or my head. And so basically, if I'm trying to move my hair to the right, I have my hand in the complete wrong (laughs) side of my face. And the funny thing is, is that It doesn't click in right away. Like I try a few times this motion, this hand motion till it clicks in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This isn't a mirror. Please tell me this happens to you. Does that happen to you? I'm wondering. I think there might be a setting where you can change it to give you the mirror image. But then I'm thinking, does that give me the mirror image of everybody else? And I don't know if I want that. So what do you do with Zoom? And does the non-mirror image ever play tricks on you? That is my anecdotal lightness. What's making you laugh this week? What's light in your world this week? Not to discount all the other things, but I just put this segment in because so often we are in the depths during the episode. So just to balance it out, what's funny in your world? Okay, if you want to connect with me, I'm on Instagram at Lori Sase. That is L-O-R-I-S-A-S-E or my website, lorisase.com. I will put a link to the reclamation guide in the show notes. Basically, just scroll down to the bottom of my contact page. I would love for you to download it if you're interested. I hope you have the best week. And if anything is hard or sorrowful in your world, I honor that too. I'm thinking of you. I always do. Thank you, as always, for being with me. Take really good care and look after yourself. Thank you.